Demeric House is perhaps the most representative historic home of Coral Gables. This is the house where George Merrick lived with his parents and siblings at an early age. But when he got married to Eunice Peacock, he needed a place to call his own. And that's how the Merrick Cottage came into life. It was built in 1916 by George Merrick for his bride, Eunice Peacock. And it was the true residence of Coral Gables founder George Merrick for most of his married life. A romantic nest for two lovebirds, located just steps away from his family home. The cottage was designed to allow the newlyweds enjoy the outdoors and entertain guests on their busy social life. And for the first time, cameras are allowed to get inside this magnificent property to get a grasp of the most intimate place of George Merrick. Join us on this special edition of Historic Homes of Coral Gables as we explore the Merrick Cottage, also known as the Honeymoon Cottage, a house that is certainly a product of love. She calls it Point Sienna Place and George's family calls it the Bride's Cottage. And he and Eunice both planned this house. They decided how many rooms it would have, how big it would be, where the porch would be, how far it would be from uh, George's mother, and so on. This cottage that we moved into in 1999 just exuded George and Eunice. You'd walk around and you could tell what they would have done here. And George was a romantic. And you can get a sense of how much he loved Eunice when you walk through this front part of the house where they would have spent most of their time. I was interested in local history and applied to become a docent at Coral Gables Merrick House when we were not living here. And then we found this house in 2000 and we fell in love with it as soon as we walked through the front door. So the most interesting and our favorite place in the house has to be the front porch. It's very long, it's very broad. In uh, weather like today, we sit out there as much as we can. My husband sits on the front porch and works his puzzles. We have, when we have company over, we sit on the front porch and sip wine. But also this front living space, the, the living room with the exposed coral rock and the massive uh, ceiling height and the spacious room um, in, in this whole length of the house. There is a lot of space to congregate when we have company, for people to go off in a corner and visit intimately. It's just a very inviting home. Because the house dates to 1916, we wanted the furnishings to reflect that. So a lot of the furnishings you'll see in the house are from the arts and crafts era or mission style furniture, both on the porch and within the house. And we did that purposefully because we wanted this to look like George and Eunice had just stepped out for a few days and they'll be back soon and people can come and visit them and it will look like what they might have had when they were living here. Much of what's in the house is original. The French doors have the, all of the French doors throughout the house have the original bubbly glass, so it's the old glass. The floors are Dade County Pine. So the original Dade County Pine, still on the floors, the hardware, much of the hardware in the house is original. It would have been here when, when George and Eunice were living here. The coral rock on the outside of the house and on the interior, all original to the house. In 
It has a lot of outdoor space because George and Eunice loved sitting outdoors. And we have a, a photo of Eunice sitting on the front porch in hickory furniture, and she's enjoying a beautiful, brisk day like today. And it's relatively small when George and Eunice lived here. It has a bedroom for George and Eunice. It has no kitchen because mom's house is just steps away so they can go there for meals. It has a butler's pantry. And my guess is they use that as a root cellar because it is always cool and damp in the basement. We believe the architect is Martin Luther Hampton, who had done quite a bit of work for George, and he and Eunice both planned this house. This, of all the homes we've owned, and we've owned about six homes in our lifetime, this is our favorite by far. It has so much character, there are so many stories associated with this house. It's tied directly to local history and to George Merrick and his family. This was picked up at a garage sale in North Miami. It is a signed Althea Fink Merrick down in the corner, so we know it belonged to her. But this is done on cardboard. But she used, it, it was known that she used whatever was available to her at the time. And this is a beach scene painted by Richard Merrick. It is oil on canvas, and it looks like it might have been on Biscayne Bay with the sailboat and the uh, family enjoying the sand. So this is a South Florida landscape. It's an oil painting done by Richard Merrick. It's definitely a South Florida scene. You can see the bay water, you can see the sand and the tree. And I knew its significance because I had been a docent at Coral Gables Merrick House. So I knew about George Merrick, I knew about his wife Eunice, I knew quite a bit of the local history. We walked into this house and felt that it fit us perfectly, but primarily because of the stories behind the house. The most I would miss is being so anchored in the history of the community in this house. I would miss the front porch. I would miss the memories we've created here with our family. Uh, there have been many Christmases and Thanksgivings celebrated in this house, just as George and Eunice would have had family over to celebrate a variety of events when he and Eunice were living here. This house represents not only the history that George and Eunice left us, but also our personal family history. Uh, there are two decades of that anchored in this house, and we'll miss that. Thank you to the Yusko family for allowing us into their home and for preserving so beautifully this magnificent Coral Gables jewel, which almost a hundred years later continues to speak about the love that inspired George Merrick into building our city beautiful. And thank you for watching another episode of Historic Homes of Coral Gables. See you next time.